there's a big debate in the literature as how old is warfare or intergroup aggression. And the reason the issue is disputed is that among hunter-gatherer societies today, or what they're called small-scale societies, inter-societal uh, warfare is rare. And uh, some, some scholars argue that in fact it was not part of what people did in antiquity. Uh, so this is an unresolved matter in both ethnography and prehistory. So one would say, well, the only thing you have to do is actually find the remains, and if there are no remains of warfare, it means it wasn't there. But that's very difficult to establish, because if you have communities that actually have no cemeteries and have no settled conditions, so the chances that you will find the remains of a, of a, of a fight, of a war, of an attack, are very, very remote. So that makes Nataruk extraordinarily special because for whatever reasons, the people were killed and they fell and they fell in the shallow waters of a lagoon or they were left in the shallow waters of a lagoon and they were preserved, their bodies were preserved. So we have an instant, a glimpse of something very rare to preserve. West Turkana is a fascinating place and we know about it because they have found such important and famous hominin fossils there and also Miocene and apes. And in there we went, we started working in an area to the southwest uh, of Lake Turkana uh, that we found that there is an extraordinary record of the late Pleistocene, early Holocene, high lake stand when the lake was indeed much bigger than it is today. So this new place where we found the back of a skull, I'd never been before, no, but none of us had been before. And we said, well, does this place have a name? And the Turkana said, well, it's called Nataruk. So we found the remains of at least 27 people at Nataruk. Uh, and of those skeletons, 12 were pretty complete or partially complete in situ as they had uh, died. And in those, 10 out of those 12 have evidence of having been killed violently. That first skull that we saw, the back of it, was actually lying prone, lying on its belly. And when it got to the face, the face was buried in, in the sediments, when we removed the face from, from the sediments, we saw it was also crushed in here. And, um, and the lesions are very clear that it was a sharp force, blunt instrument that hit him in the front of the face and hit him so hard that this part of the skull is pushed inwards and this part came outwards. And then he was hit on the side of the head so hard that the mouth moved, but only the top, not the bottom. And in doing so, he cracked the neck. And that man just fell and lied. As, as he fell in the waters of the lagoon, he remained. Another one that was Fran, Fran and Dennis who excavated, they called me because it was cemented in, in lake sediment, so it was very, very hard to get out. And again, again, it was prone, lying like this, with the feet higher than the, than the head. And when we got to the head and we cleaned it, and it had an obsidian, the point of an arrow still stuck on the head. And with that, we said, OK, let's go slowly and look very carefully at all these skeletons that are coming out. We live in a world greatly affected by warfare and it's not surprising that archaeologists and anthropologists have taken a great interest in what might be the history of war. For some that history may only be as old as the first civilizations and the first cities and nations. For others it goes back to the beginnings of farming when people had resources to defend and territories to protect. 
So the issue of whether hunter-gatherers engaged in warfare, whether it's part of human nature going back into our evolutionary past, is an important one. And that's where Nataruk is so critical, because it shows that hunter-gatherers did engage in something very similar to war. So why should hunter-gatherers fight? Well, just like any other society, there's always competition for resources. Those resources might be women, they might be water, they might be access to game and fish, and perhaps in Nataruk's case it is all of those. So even though they may not own property and resources, there are still things to fight for. Some may be surprised by Nataruk uh, that it shows a violent past and hunter-gatherers. Others may feel that it confirms their views that human nature can be violent and aggressive. In practice, of course, it's neither. Humans have a history that is both full of warfare, but also full of cooperation and sacrifice. Nataruk will always have a special place in the history of this project.